Today I am looking at the brand new Artly Play Smart Projector. So this is an HD LED projector with full Android OS built in. It's priced around 269. You have HDMI inputs for your movie and game console action, which you can enjoy on a massive 200 inch projection display. All right, quickly go through the specs. So this is an LED video projector. Lamp life is 70,000 hours. The brightness is 140 ANSI lumens. You've got a native resolution of 1280 by 720. Now the contrast ratio is 6000 to 1. It does support digital zoom and you do have manual keystone correction. Now maximum optimal screen size 200 inches. You've got multiple HDMI inputs for all your devices. Dual hi-fi stereo speakers. And when you're not watching movies on it, you can actually use this device as a Bluetooth speaker. On the top, you've got some navigational controls, but you can do all the same things with the included remote control. There is also a focus adjustment. And on the front of the projector, you have your lens cap and your lens. There is also an infrared port for your remote control. Now on the side, you have what looks like a speaker grill and some vents. On the back, you've got power socket, physical power button. You've got an AV port, headphone jack. Uh, you've got two HDMI inputs, so you can hook up your favorite game console, Android TV box, PS4, PS5, Xbox, and enjoy any of those on a display projection up to 200 inches. And you also have two USB ports for media playback. On the other side, there's another speaker grill, and we are back to the front. And this is what the bottom of the projector looks like. So you can see here, kickstand to give you some elevation should you need it. So inside the box, you're getting your user manual. You have a 3.5 millimeter to RCA for your old school connections. So VCRs, PlayStation 2s, Nintendo Wii's, old camcorders can all be connected to this projector. You're also getting a power cable, HDMI cable, and standard infrared remote control. And this remote is powered by two AAA batteries. So without any further ado, I am gonna get this all connected up. We are gonna do a whole bunch of movie and video tests. And we're also gonna connect up a game console. It's likely to be my PlayStation 4. And we're gonna see what gaming is like on this, including a latency test as well. So I'll be right back. All right, so I've got the projector set up. And the first thing I always do is of course, test out the fan noise. So moving a meter away from the projector, here is my sound meter. So from a one meter distance, you can expect a fan noise of around 43 decibels. And if you were right next to the projector, then you can expect around 49 to 50 decibels of fan noise. So I have the projector positioned around three meters away from the wall in front of us. And we are projecting close to a hundred inches. And what's amazing about this box is you get Android TV OS built in. So customizable channels at the bottom. So you can go ahead and turn on or off um, the channels that you prefer to see. Your voice search at the top left hand corner and then you've got your settings. So first of all, let's go ahead and open up the main system settings. The first thing I wanna show you here is the Wi-Fi. So this supports only two gigahertz Wi-Fi. There is no option for five gigahertz. Now you've got something called mouse mode, which I'm gonna switch on. So if you long press the OK button for three seconds, you will enter mouse mode. And you can see we've got a mouse on the screen, which is just controlled with the up and down arrows. So that's mouse mode, you have source. So you can change between the different inputs you have here. So HDMI 1, HDMI 2, or AV1. Right, you've got languages, display mode. I'll click that and show you what to expect. So you've got standard, movie, or office. I'm gonna leave it on movie and go back. Aspect ratio auto, four by three or 16 by nine. Keystone correction, manual keystone correction. If you wanted to fine tune things, you can see that I can do this with the arrow keys, left and right. So this is especially useful if you have the uh, projector at an angle. So if you have it on the far right or the far left, you can adjust it to give you a straight looking picture. You've got zoom here, so digital zoom is supported. We again, press up and down. So this is the maximum size. You can take this down to about what looks like 42 inches. In our case, we can do about 100 inches on this wall. So let's go back. Projection mode is quite important. Now you've got four different projection modes and it even gives you this handy illustration to explain what each one means. Um, what else do we have? We've got sound mode, so volume control date time storage. So let's check out the internal storage. You do get 16 gigs of internal storage from which there is 12 gigs free to use. 
If we go back, you can also see there's a reset update. So this does support OTA updates. Device preferences and about. I'll quickly show you about first of all. So this is Android TV OS version nine. And if you wanna know what the build is, there's more information on the build. Go back and check out device preferences. So here you have all your Google system settings and preferences, etc. Now we've got Android TV OS. So let's just test out if Chromecast works. So when searching for a device, you can see clearly projector LED. I'm gonna tap that, connecting to projector LED. So it doesn't look like Google Chromecast wants to work. Now I have tried this with a few phones, but unfortunately I can't get Chromecast to work with this projector. Now quick look at the system apps. Now there are quite a few apps already installed. There were a few um, that I installed myself. And you do have the Google TV OS version of the Play Store, the limited version but it gives you most of the ATV apps that you might need. All right, so time to check out the streaming quality of this internal Android. So let's begin with YouTube. So you do have 4K streaming on YouTube. Um, let's see if this projector can actually handle 4K. So I'm gonna select 4K and we're gonna see how it plays. You can see we've got frame drops and it's freezing all over the place. It's definitely not gonna handle 4K 60, that's for sure. You can see we are streaming in 1080p at 60 frames per second and the video streams super smooth with no issues, no buffering. Let's not forget to pause the video at this point, which I always do. Now, let's get a close up first of all, before I describe the colors. So a very nice detailed image all the way around. Um, there is no pixelation at all up close. But here's the thing, the colors are not quite there. It's not as vibrant as other projectors that I have tested, um, even other Artly projectors that I've tested, the colors are definitely uh, feeling a bit washed out. So it looks like we don't have any settings to customize the color. So what you see is what you get, and I think the colors are a little bit washed out. Now I do wanna switch on the light to show you what to expect if you were to use this projector in the daytime. So just to show you guys, that is a powerful white LED light. Um, when I turn that light on, um, it kind of gives you an idea of what daytime would be like. The projection is there, you can still see, um, but of course it's not as detailed. So I'm gonna switch that light back off and you can see that looks much better. Now I'm actually gonna open the curtains to show you the difference as well. So natural light, here we go. That's natural light outside. And you can see everything on the display. It actually looks uh, more detailed. It actually looks more brighter. With You can see natural light coming in, curtains are open and the image actually looks better than it did than when I switched on the ultra bright LED. The ultra bright LED is very bright. You can see, so if I switch off that light, in natural light, you're still gonna get a decent image. And I'll close the curtain now. All right, curtain, curtain closed, and there you have a pretty decent looking image minus, uh, minus the punchy colors. Now let's just try out a few more trailers and see what this projector can do. You tell me about the kids. One day, a couple of kids get razor blades in their candy. It's your first life ever. You are an infinite. You can't drop me. Ooh, bless you. No one knows where we are. All right, so that was YouTube streaming. Now let's check out some Netflix. So it looks like we can stream a maximum of 480p on Netflix. And Amazon Prime Video also supports maximum 480p. So that was the internal Android system in a nutshell. So I just connected up the PlayStation 4. Now we're going to see if the image quality, projection quality is better um, when connected via HDMI. To do that, I'm going to open up YouTube. Wow. There is a difference. Big difference. All right, pause it on this scene. I think, I think most of you can see the difference right there. That is what the internal YouTube should have done. But this is the PlayStation 4 connected via HDMI. 
and you can see we've got ultra bright colors beautiful contrast absolutely no pixelation up close so very good image quality when you connect a device via the hdmi port so i will play one more trailer this is the server wow what you do to my son we're done the only way you're getting your so with all the streaming out of the way, let's go ahead and play a few games um, and see how gaming looks like on this projector. So let's begin with Street Fighter V. So there you have it guys, that was the Artly Play. So this is a 720p projector for £269. Yes, you have Android TV OS, which is a plus point, but for a 720p resolution projector, the price is on the higher side. Instead, you could get a cheaper 720p projector for less than half the price. See my chart for ideas and just add a Google Chromecast TV device and you'll get the same experience for a much cheaper price. And if we check out my latest projector chart for 2021, allowing you to compare the specs and prices of all the latest projectors, you will see that the Artly Play has ranked at position 19 on this chart. Now, if we ignore the price, the projection quality and brightness is good, but as I demonstrated in the video, the internal Android streaming produces washed out colors and there is no color adjustment in settings. However, when I connected a PlayStation 4, the pictures and colors look much better, but again, there is no way of adjusting that color um, to tone it down or turn it up yourself. Um, yeah, it was more vibrant and more enjoyable. Gaming was also mad fun with no input lag at all. Internal speakers were very good, loud and clear with no distortion. Fan noise is quite loud at 43 decibels from a one meter distance, but if you are right next to the projector, it's gonna sound a lot louder. Other positives, you have two HDMI inputs, two USB ports, a responsive remote control, and a smooth overall experience. But do bear in mind, there is no Chromecast supported, Netflix and Prime were limited to 480p, and you have only 2 GHz Wi-Fi with no Ethernet port as an alternative. So whilst I did enjoy using this projector, I just found that there are much better options out there for a cheaper price. I hope you found this video useful. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.